Okay, we're here with Rita to talk about just a warm-up here on um, solving equations. We'll do some easier ones, and then we'll do some harder ones, and then we'll do some word problems. This is all stuff that you've probably seen in previous years, and we're just going to do a quick review. Sound good? Yeah. Okay, so let's look at some starter problems first. So when solving equations, here's one, 3x equals 15. So you're basically asking yourself, what number can go in for x to make this true? So 3 times some number equals 15. What's that number? Five. Five, okay? So you know that that number is five, but there's another way you could solve this. It might seem like overkill for right now because you just automatically know that three times five is 15, but you can ask yourself, what is that three doing to the X? It's making it bigger. Well, it's, yeah, but how? Is it adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing? It's multiplying. Yeah, good, it's multiplying by the X. So when you're solving an equation, what you wanna do is the opposite of what's being done to the variable, okay? So three is multiplying by X. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. Division, so we wanna divide by three to get rid of that three. So what I'm talking about here is that three is kind of bugging me. I wish I had X by itself. So to get rid of that three, I need to do the opposite and divide by three. But I can't just divide one side of the equation by three because then the equation wouldn't be true anymore, right? right? So I have to divide the other side by three as well. And that's what I'm doing here. So what's three divided by three? One. One, so you just have one X or just X on the left side. And what's 15 divided by three? Five. Five, and so we can write X equals five. So that was a little bit of a longer way to get to the same answer, but when you are dealing with more complex problems, you're, the answer might not kind of leap out to you like X equals five did this time, okay? okay? So that's why you need to understand how to go through these steps to solve a problem. Let's do another example, all right? Okay. Okay, so over here we have X minus five, equals seven. So some number minus five is going to be seven. How about that one in your head? What's that number? 12. 12, okay. So we know that x has to equal 12 because 12 minus five is seven. But we can apply the same kind of steps as we did before. Um, so we ask ourselves, okay, I'm up here at this equation, x minus five equals seven, that I want x by itself. It's not by itself. It has this minus five. That five, is it being added or subtracted from x? Subtracted. So we're gonna do the opposite. What's the opposite of subtraction? Addition. Addition, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write x minus five equals seven, and then we're gonna add five to both sides, okay? Okay. Remember, we can't add five to just one side because that would make the equation untrue. It wouldn't be the same equation anymore. So now, x plus five, or minus five, plus five. Well, the minus five and plus five, they just kind of make each other go away, right? Because that makes X minus or plus zero, right? Right. Right, okay. And then what's seven plus five? 12. 12. So we get to our same answer this way, X equals 12. So um, as I say, it's probably seems like overkill to go through these steps when you have um, such a simple starter example here. But when you get to more complex problems, you're going to need these kinds of steps. Let's look at another example really quick here. So here we have 8a plus 3 equals 27. So this is probably one of those examples where you say, wow, it's not immediately obvious to me what number a is, right? Right. Okay, so we're going to go through these steps to try to solve for a. And there's two things that are bugging us here, two things that make A not by themselves. What are those two things? Um, you have the 3, the plus 3, yep. and you have an 8. Right, okay. Now, you can get rid of those things in either order, but it usually is easier in this kind of a situation, and once you do more and more problems, you'll get used to this. It'll be easier to get rid of the 3 first. Um, so what's the three doing to the A? Is it adding to it, subtracting, multiplying, dividing? Adding. It's adding. So what's the opposite of adding? Subtracting. Subtracting. So we're gonna minus three from both sides. Now before we do that, what is that other thing that's bugging us? What's A8 doing to the A? It's multiplying. It's multiplying. So to get rid of that one, you're gonna do what? Divide. Divide, the opposite of multiplication. So you could divide everything in this equation by eight, and that would get rid of that eight in front of the A, but it would give me some fractions like three eighths and 27 eighths, and I don't know about you, but I don't wanna deal with those kind of fractions. So the easier way is to do what you first said is to subtract three from both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And what's then on the left-hand side, you have eight A plus three minus three. So what's left on the left side? 
8a. 8a, right? Mm -hmm. And then on the right side, you have 27 minus 3. What's that? 24. 24. Okay, so let's write that. So now we're down to 8a equals 24. So this was a good decision to subtract the 3 first because now we're to something pretty simple. And now we have that 8 multiplying by the a. How are we going to get rid of that? Divide by 8. Okay, good. So we'll go ahead and divide both sides by 8 there. What's going to be left on the left-hand side? A. Just A. And what's 24 divided by 8? Uh, 3. 3. So now we know that A equals 3. And we can just really quickly, it's always a good idea to check our answers. If A equals 3, let's just go up here, 8 times A, so 8 times 3, what would that be? 24. Plus 3 is? 27. 27. So that's our correct answer. And this is why you need to go ahead and use the steps and to do them in the order that's easiest for you, most convenient for you, to get to the answers. Up here, you can probably do it in your head. Once you get to something like this or more complex even more, like what we're going to do in a second over here, you need to go through the steps. Okay? okay. Let's look at a harder example. Okay, so now we have five times the quantity, or some stuff in parentheses, um, x plus 3, and that equals 10. Okay, now, whew, what's bugging us here? Mm, the x plus 3. The x plus 3, so the x, x yeah, is, is the 3 is there adding to the x, right? Yeah. And then what else is bugging us? The 5. The 5. Now, that 5 is also multiplying by everything in the parentheses, right? So you can't just subtract 3 at this point because that 5 is out there multiplying by the 3. So um, there's a couple of different things, different ways that you can go about solving um, this equation. So let's walk through each one of them. And both of them are equally good, okay? They're both equally convenient for you, too. So let's first try going ahead and applying the distributive property. So this 5, as we said, is multiplying by the x and the 3. And so we have 5 times x is 5x, plus 5 times 3 is 15, and that equals our 10. And I accidentally put the next step here already for you. Mm -hmm. But um, so what the first step that we took here was to go ahead and apply the distributive property. Okay? okay? So that's one of the ways that you can do this. And then, of course, now you have a problem that looks very similar to this over here. You have something multiplying by a variable plus something else. So the first step we can do is subtract 15 from both sides. What would that leave on the left-hand side? Um, 5x. 5x. And then on the right-hand side, 10 minus 15? Minus 5. Yep, or negative 5. So 5x equals negative 5. Now what's bugging us here? The 5. The 5. What's it doing to the x? It's multiplying. So what do we have to do? Divide. Divide. So we're going to now divide both sides by that 5. And the 5 divided by 5 on the left-hand side will leave just... 1, so x. Yep, so just x. And then negative 5 divided by 5 is... Negative 1. Negative 1. So our answer here, using the steps that we chose um, here, is uh, x equals negative 1. Now there's another way that you could do this, which is you could say... That 5 is bugging me over here. I want to get rid of it, and it's multiplying by the by x and some other stuff in here too, right? Right. So we could say, let's get rid of that 5. It's multiplying, so let's divide both sides by 5. This is also a great way to solve this problem. So we, we went ahead and put the first step here. So this 5 up here and this 5 are going to just cancel out, as they say, or 5 divided by 5 is 1. So on the left-hand side, you're just going to have this x plus 3. Okay. okay, and what do we have on the right-hand side? 10 divided by 5, what's that going to be? 2. 2, okay. So let's go ahead and put that step there. So we have x plus 3 equals 2, and now what's bugging us? Um, the plus 3. The plus 3. So what do we need to do? Minus 3. So we subtract 3 from both sides. On the left side, what do we have? x. And then 2 minus 3 is? Minus 1. Minus 1. Look, we got the same answer um, going either method, okay? And so really it's just personal preference. You could do the distributive property. A lot of times that makes sense for most people because it kind of gets all the parentheses out of the way. Or you could go ahead and do this divide by 5 first. And that's one of the great things in math. Often there's not just one way to do something, okay? okay. Let's look at another example. So here we have a plus 3 and all of that is over 5 equals 9, okay? So what's bugging us here? Let's see, adding 3 and dividing by 5. Yeah, okay. So, um, you know, there's, there's a, you could do this in a couple of different ways, but one of the ways is a lot easier this time. So 
Um, if we were to try subtracting three, that wouldn't quite work because that five is dividing by the three or dividing into the three. So we wouldn't need to subtract three exactly. So that doesn't look like a very easy way to go. That five though, that's bugging us, what's it doing to the a plus three? It's dividing. It's dividing. So how do we get rid of that? By multiplying. Multiplying. So if we multiply both sides by what here? By five. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to multiply five times that whole thing on the left, and then we're going to multiply five times the nine on the right. Okay. Okay. So now um, the five that are that is on the the multiplying here and then in the denominator there, those are going to just divide to one. So on the left hand side, what will we have? A plus three. A plus three. How about on the right hand side? Uh, forty five. Forty five. So a plus three equals forty five. Now what's bugging us? That plus three. That plus three. So how do we get rid of that? Minus three. Okay. And what will we have left on the left-hand side then? A. And what, how about on the right-hand side? Uh, 42. Okay. So A equals 42. Let's just really quickly make sure that that is correct by checking our answer up here. 42 plus three is? 45. Divided by five is? Nine. Nine. Okay. So perfect. And so this, this time there was an easier way to go. I didn't even write out the other way, but you could have gone, to, you could have said, okay, well, this is really a over five plus three over five. And then you could subtract three fifths from both sides. And it, that gets pretty complicated with fractions. So one of the tricks to learning how to do all these problems really efficiently is to figure out the easier way for you to do it. But the other way isn't incorrect. You could do it that way too. Okay, now all of this is useful um, really when we start to apply it in the real world and uh, word problems are trying to describe real world situations. So let's look at one of those. For a summer job mowing lawns, you get paid $25 per day plus $20 for each lawn you mow. One day you earn $165. How many lawns did you mow that day? Hmm. So I don't know about you, but about halfway through paragraphs like this, I start to kind of lose the meaning. <laughs> so I, what I have to do is I have to go back in and I have to kind of write down each thing that I'm looking for. I have to kind of slow down my mind and then just carefully move through it. So first let's ask ourselves, what are we looking for? Let's see how many days is it? How many days? We say it says oh, one day did... you earn one hundred and sixty five dollars. And so oh, what are we looking for? Oh, yeah. And see how many lawns that you mow. Right. So that's that's what we refer to as our unknown thing or just our unknown. And usually we put a variable for the unknown. So let's get a variable for that un unknown. So X is going to equal the number of lawns mowed. OK. 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 Now it tells us that there's a certain amount that we've earned. How much did we earn? Um, $165. Okay, now part of that was based on how many lawns we mowed because we partially get paid by number of lawns mowed. So how much do we get paid for each lawn that we mow? Um, $20. $20. So if we were to take 20 and multiply it by the X, that would tell us the portion of our payment that was for lawns mowed, right? Right. But then we also get paid a little bit more, right? Right. And how much is that? $25. $25. So we get that 25 plus our 20 times X, and that should equal the 165, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's write that out. So let's see if this makes sense. $20 times each lawn that you mowed, plus that $25 that you get automatically, no matter how many lawns you mowed, and that all should equal 165, right? Right. Okay, so now we've done the hard work. We've taken all these words, and we've turned them into math, which is a lot easier to deal with. And we just need to figure out what X is. And we know how to do that from all these steps over here. So what's bugging us here? The plus 25 and the 20. And which one do you want to get rid of first, probably? Uh, probably the 25. The 25. You could do it the other way, but it would get you into some fraction territory, which is a little harder to deal with. So that plus 25, how are we going to get rid of that? Subtract 25. Okay, so we'll subtract 25 from both sides. What will be left on the left side? 20X. Good. And how about on the right side? Can you use some mental math there? Uh, 140. Good. So 20x equals 140. Now it's bugging us? The 20. The 20. What's it doing to the x? It multiplies. So how do we get rid of it? Divide. Divide. So we're going to divide both sides by 20. And the left-hand side will be what? X. And how about the right side? 7. 7. Okay. So x equals 7. What does that mean, though? 
what's our answer to our question that the real world problem was trying to ask us? Um, you, you mowed seven lawns. You mowed seven lawns that day, right? Right. Okay, great. So again, this is a, a review of a whole bunch of stuff that you probably took a few years to learn. So we've run through a lot here. But do these steps make sense? Yes. Okay, great. Good job.